What's up everybody? Welcome to Bonita Springs, Florida. On today's video, we're gonna go from the fancy stuff on US 41, like the promenade where we are now, to the real streets and show you everything you need to know about Bonita Springs. What's up everybody? On today's video, we're gonna be exploring Bonita Springs, Florida, and why it's one of the best places to live in Florida. We're gonna start the tour in the Corkscrew Swamp, a protected area just to the east of Bonita Springs. The natural area is a great place for fishing. You'll find alligator in the water. You'll also find bass. You'll find garfish, oscars, Tarpon snook are known to find their way this far inland. Fish. There's plenty of turkey, black bear, bobcat, and even the elusive Florida panther can be seen in these natural settings. If you enjoy hiking in nature, this is a great thing about Bonita Springs. During this time of the year in the summer, many of the trails are gonna be covered in wet. But if you come in the dry season in the winter, you'll have good access to more of these trails. However, in the winter, there's a lot more foot traffic. Many of the trails are marked for easy understanding. Some of the trails are completely underwater this time of year. Other than the wildlife areas, there's several new communities east of Interstate 75 and Bonita Springs, like Palmyra and a few others. And of course, there's beaches and other fancy stuff, but we'll do that on another video. I just wanted to show you what the town itself looked like. But yeah, of course, there's beautiful beaches. Lover's Key State Park, the entire sterile bay barefoot beach plenty of beaches but in this video i just wanted to go with like the city itself and we'll leave the beaches for another day if you want to just be somewhere secluded and out of the way one of these communities on the east side of interstate 75 could be a good match for you the worst things about bonita springs is that people that work in naples and bonita live in lee county further up in cape coral or lehigh have to use bonita springs to get through so at around rush hour traffic northbound is really bad definitely one of the worst things about bonita springs is that during the rush hour especially on bonita beach road and traffic heading northbound on 75 is pretty bad and this is the slow part of the year during the winter when there's a lot more people it's pretty much gridlocked all the way through bonita springs especially on bonita beach road and even old 41 especially interstate 75 if you're looking at bonita springs in the emptiest time of the year it might look pretty now but you don't want to be here in the winter this road right here will be pretty much gridlocked that time of the year and occasionally there are beggars at the bonita springs exit of 75 not today again this time of year it's very slow but during the winter when there's more people you'll definitely see a lot of beggars that come from other states They'll come to Florida to get away from the winter, snowboarding homeless and beggars. Even crime is higher during that time of year since a lot of people come to Florida to commit their crimes here. These houses here have water all the way up to the window after Hurricane Irma, unless they're still going for over $300,000. A lot of people that buy these houses don't understand that after a hurricane, they'll be to the windows. The Imperial River, while being beautiful, is definitely going to take a long time to drain after a hurricane. It means if you're adjacent to the areas near the Imperial River, you can expect to deal with flooding even for months after a hurricane. Oak Creek comes off the Imperial River and it winds its way through Bonita Springs, through some wooded areas. 
as a shout, we would go back there with metal detectors and look for artifacts. Since this area has been inhabited as far back as the time of the Spaniards, with the belief that the Fountain of Youth could have been here in Bonita Springs. The old dog track is no longer for dog racing, and there's currently a project to find other purposes for this land. Since Florida has banned dog racing, well, this giant span of land, which was used solely for that purpose, is now being repurposed. In the corner here, this restaurant has had many names. Most of the less being on a major intersection, it is still an iconic part of Bonita. All right, we're driving down Old 41. This has been restored beautifully with palm trees. And it is basically the downtown of Bonita Springs. On the left is the Shangri-La. This graffiti has been popping up all over Bonita Springs. I have no idea what it means but uh, probably not a good thing. Behind the trees here is the historic Shangri-La, which is where the springs are at. It's like a hotel that's been remodeled. You can barely see it from the road, but it's back there. 41 is basically the downtown of Bonita Springs. And uh, there's a lot of little businesses here that are kind of historic buildings, a few murals and stuff like that. Of course, the Shangri-La, but this is the historic downtown and it's been restored pavers one of the nicest projects that i've seen so far in florida has been what they've done here with downtown bonita springs some of the historic buildings have murals depicting the history of bonita springs originally bonita springs was called survey and that's pretty much what it was out here they were just surveying the land but this building here has historical murals that depict the area's history from its establishment till today and it is facing US Old 41. Right behind Old 41, you'll find neighborhoods that have a lot of historic homes as well. You'll find just older homes with very tall palm trees. And there's actually a new apartment complex on the south end of Old 41. You can see it right there in the distance. And these apartments are renting for something like around $1,800 to $2,000 a month plus fees and whatnot. You can see it there. Beautiful apartments. Um, aesthetically, I don't think it matches Bonita Springs very well. And those are on Dean Street. You can see the apartments right here on Dean Street. Mango trees line Dean Street. It's called the water line. I went in and got some information from them. Um, and they're very helpful, actually. Very informative, very helpful. Seems like a nice place to live. The water line of Bonita Springs. There's an older house right here. Big, massive trees. Dean Street has some beautiful older homes and also giant trees. To the south of us is Oak Creek. I spent a lot of time here as a kid since my family owned a property on the street and uh, where these apartments are now used to be my playground big wooded area this school here is from the era of the 1920s it's an elementary school here in Bonita Springs and this used to pretty much all be cow pastures back in the day but now it's a residential community with the historic school right in the heart of Bonita Springs has a lot of gated communities and then it also has kind of the historic town core some parts of the historic town core are the hispanic neighborhoods making up about 30 percent of the city's population these days mostly mexican is a more established community however these days there's also a guatemalan community here in bonita springs which is part of lee county that has several large guatemalan communities one of them is here in Bonita Springs. These are the people that are mowing the lawns for all the rich people in Naples, Fort Myers, Bonita Springs, and Estero. Somebody's gotta cut the lawn. And these are the people that do the jobs that most of us would rather not do. And they reside right here in Bonita Springs. 
you can see once again, we're approaching Old 41. On the left is a mural that depicts the city's early history, natural settings, Florida Panthers, historic cottages, the Railroad Express, and of course, uh, the survey, which was what this area was known as originally, until they changed the name to make it sound more attractive. Farmers from Alabama came here and tried to establish slavery in the area with the cultivation of tropical fruits like pineapple, but they failed. They were not able to adapt and prosper in Bonita Springs. That was one of the first economical endeavors in this area to fail. Uh, the area really hasn't produced too much. It's a very hostile environment um, with hurricanes and other natural circumstances that made being a pioneer in this area quite difficult but as you can see the palm tree lined boulevards of downtown Bonita Springs many parks people walking palm trees historic buildings it is really one of the most charming and well-preserved cities in the entire state of Florida and the projects to revitalize the downtown area have really done great. Right in the center of Bonita is this very large tree that is uh, right behind or in front of the new library. There's in many the statues and all types of neat things to see in downtown Bonita. So right in front of the library and the sheriff's office is this large tree that pretty much picks up an entire block basically. As you can see, Pavers have been installed throughout the entire historic district and new sidewalks. As you can see, this tree is just enormous, literally taking up an entire block of downtown Bonita. The fruit that this plant drops is very slippery, so you need to be careful if you walk closer underneath. look again at the giant tree. It is absolutely gigantic. Right behind it again is the new library this building here used to be an old auto repair shop and it is still not exactly been restored undoubtedly the city is very walkable friendly one of the most walkable friendly cities in the entire city the riverside park is also nearby in downtown and this is where open concerts are held especially These in the outdoor winter. concerts can carry thousands of people this outdoor area here in the winter can have all types of events with thousands of people gathering right here in this open stadium downtown it's a good hangout spot when there's no concerts going on with the rain we had earlier today it's been kind of dead And there wouldn't be enough time to show you guys all the creeks and parks and bridges and murals that there are here in Bonita. There really is a lot going on in the city. Here's the historic Benzins grocery store, which recently this week had a very unfortunate thing happen. Like uh, even Bonita Springs is no longer free from crime. <laughs> Crappy events. Of place some historic here. cottages here in downtown. Lots of historic buildings here. You can see a, a historic building here with a bunch of majestic royal palm trees. The Imperial River, right next to it, is the historic Benson's Grocery Store in the corner. One of the most iconic uh, businesses in Bonita. Unfortunately, there was a uh, Wild West situation that took place out here recently. Seems like Bonita Springs, despite being just a nice little place, it's not like it's a horrible crime-ridden place, but it can have its moments. And apparently, you know, there's no real place that's free from crime anymore. It used to be an almost perfect place, not quite, but it sure as crap ain't anymore. vast majority of people here are just hard working people but it's been hard to uh to keep Bonita Springs the way it used to be and everybody that's moved here uh recently all the growth and all that has been for the best but that can be said about just about anywhere honestly 
pretty much the whole country is going in a bad direction. You can't just pin it down to one town and say this town went to crap. It's it's everywhere. Things will never be the same anywhere. But as you can see, it's a beautiful downtown. Today it's kind of rainy and it's still early in the day. So it's it's actually, this is about as laid back as you'll see this area. It will become much more congested than this during the winter and even on a sunny day. So you're looking at Bonita Springs kind of at the deadest. Uh, you'll usually never see Bonita Springs this dead. It'll usually have a lot more life to it. So this is Bonita Springs about as slow as you'll see it. about as slow as it gets guys here in Bonita it is usually much more active than this now we're on the north side of downtown most of the businesses on this side are going to be Hispanic um, and you can see here lots of little businesses dollar stores few Latin restaurants here and there none of them are remarkably good um, there's just really not that much there's good Latin food but there's not incredible Latin food right now in Bonita there's not a place that you'd be like oh this place is incredible maybe years back but not right now um, but this is the Hispanic part of the city here mostly again the people that just do all the work we don't want to do there's a universal here which is kind of like a Latin supermarket Many years back, this community was almost solely Mexicans. A lot of them were from Mexico's, um, Mexico's uh, kind of like Mexican Texas too, a lot of Texans. But recently, um, the vast majority of Latinos now are Guatemalan. There's still some Mexicans that have been here historically, but the migrant community now is mostly Guatemalan. A little bit of litter on the side of the road there. So this is kind of uh, off of Rosemary, which is basically the hood of Manita, to be honest. The neighborhood. And it's kind of more, um, more transient here. Um, there's still homeowners back here, but it's, it's mostly uh, landscaping workers and just people that take on the jobs that the rest of us don't like to do again somebody's got to cut the grass not, not everybody can live in a mansion but this is um rosemary drive here and it's again the dead part of the day if you come back here at 6 37 at night there'll definitely be more people out and about this is a new building they constructed here which is kind of like a threeplex or four it's like a giant it looks like a single family home but it's huge it's really like several different uh units. I don't know how they pulled off the permitting on that. Population density here is very high. It may not look like it now in the daytime, but some of these houses have 10, 15 people living in them. So right now you're just looking at it empty. Basically, if you came later on in the day, especially in the evening, some of these houses can have as many as 15 people living in them. But you do the math, you know, if it costs $2,000. And not everybody here uh, is doing that. There's a lot of single family homes, but there's a lot of rental properties here that are used just to kind of house people in mass. Back this way here. They've actually built a lot of new houses back here. Um, and they actually threw a homeless shelter back here, which is the worst thing that could have happened in this neighborhood. Um, I can just pretty much say ever since I did that, the neighborhood's kind of gone downhill. Um, but they're building, uh, resource housing here for people that need it like Habitat for Humanity so this was all new it was all an empty lot on this side now they've built houses here so if you haven't been to Benita in a while this is all new no this was here and a lot of these are Habitat for Humanity housing which goes to teachers and regular working class people who are residents of the area but as you can see it looks like they're made out of OSB OSB construction it's not OSB, it's plywood. OSB doesn't really work here in Florida. But instead of being a, a block house, it's actually um, 
it's plywood and it's not exactly four feet above the crown of the road so there's definitely some shortcuts in construction to accommodate more affordable housing here but that's usually not the way houses are built in florida and i believe with habitat for humanity somebody will you buy the house it's yours but if you're going to sell it you have to sell it back to them in other words you own the house if you're going to live it but they don't give you the opportunity to sell the house um and i'm sure there's reasons for that but i think it kind of i think it kind of screws up you know i think you should give people that buy these houses the opportunity to sell them so they can move on to something better but apparently um keeping you in the hood is more vital to them keeping you as a working class person uh, I don't get it um, I think they should allow them I understand why they do it you know because it's housing that's made cheaper for the sake of allowing people to have an opportunity to work and whatnot to have a place to live so a little bit of both and they've built more back in there um, we're gonna skip on it today but uh, they've built more uh, affordable housing in all directions back here it's not the wooden rosemary it used to be there's a few new houses here and there affordable housing but at the end of the day uh, the habitat for humanity program doesn't allow the people that buy the homes to sell them and i think that's a huge flaw to make you should they should be able to like if you're able to improve your situation now you you bought real estate but you can only sell it back to their program you can't sell it at, you know at a profit um which is kind of like defeats the purpose of owning a house unless you're going to live there forever so it's basically like here we'll let you buy a house for a little bit cheap and it's not a lot cheaper it's at a percentage cheaper than than what everybody else is buying at but at the same time you're also getting a crappier product you're getting a house that's made out of plywood not a house that's made out of block and even the elevation doesn't seem like the regular cone you know it's like you're getting a, a lesser product for cheaper, but then you can't do anything with it. I think there's a huge flaw there. I think they should just let the people, if they want to sell them, sell them. It's their house. But apparently helping people uh, improve economically isn't really the goal of Habitat for Humanity. It's just giving you a house that you can live in forever if you don't ever move. Kind of, oh, odd, odd. Definitely an odd housing arrangement, but uh, that's the way it works and some people that's the only chance they'll have to buy a house through programs like that. So for them, it sounds like a deal. But when you look at it in the longer scope of things, I don't know. I, I would want to advance from one better thing. But anyways, that's my new to Springs for you from the good to the bad. Um, I, really, I don't think there's that much bad to Bonita. Um, it's, it's a great little town restaurants here really need to step their game up they really suck this restaurant buffalo ships claims to be here for 70 years but i don't know if that's even true there's another restaurant that made a claim i did a video where i said they, they claimed that they were the oldest restaurant and some other restaurants said they were the oldest restaurant and they all got into a feud on the internet on my video i was like okay buddy that's not what we're here for so anyways there's not really any restaurants in bonita that i would say oh my gosh this is incredible um you know, it's kind of been a, yeah, there's really nothing iconic here as far as restaurants that I would say. Um, so there's nothing as far as, the, it used to be many years back, but right now, there's no restaurant that I would mention. It's, I think Bonita needs to step up their game with restaurants. Because there's nothing in Bonita that I would say, oh, you have to, if you go to Bonita, you have to go to this restaurant or cafe or whatever. Not really. There's unique restaurants, like right here, this is a Guatemalan restaurant, which it's like, it's similar to Mexican food, but there's a lot more other profiles of flavor. Really not my thing, but you might like it. It's called Mayan Cafe right there. And now we're on Terry heading west. You can see they put up palm trees here. And all this is along, uh, the, you know, Bonita Springs is kind of offset from the water. There's a huge chunk of Bonita Springs that goes all the way back to the water within city limits. All the way to the coast. But the town's kind of not along the coast. It's kind of odd. Most of these little towns in Florida, 
the downtown is going to be right up against the water. But Bonita, it's, it's offset. It's kind of weird where in Bonita, the downtown is kind of several miles inland instead of being up along the coast. But uh, there's plenty of videos along the water showing you all that. But uh, this is Bonita. Great little town. Great people. Some of the hardest working people you're ever going to meet. Know that about that. Right, so now we are on uh, US 41. And this is where all the new shops and, and stores and publixes and just kind of the commercial side of the city is over here. And we're going to drive through here real quick. And we're going to eat at a new restaurant that I found. Um, it's an Italian restaurant here. But uh, you can see that even on US 41, this is where you start to see a lot of gated communities as well, big palm trees. It looks a little bit more like Fort Myers and Naples. Kind of more modern. On the left is Bonita Bay, which is practically a city. Um, very fancy, expensive place. And uh, a lot of gated communities are going to be right off of US 41. So this is kind of where your furniture stores and your fancy restaurants and stuff like that are. And US 41 goes north to south along Bonita Springs. Um, there's a little restaurant back here I'm going to eat at real quick. It's an Italian place. It's uh, nothing fancy, but I can get some uh, chicken wraps. I'm trying to eat a little bit healthier here. But you can see beautiful coconut trees, beautiful palm trees. Uh, Bonita Springs has a lot of new buildings and stuff all along here. It's kind of a more suburban feel along US 41. And then as you go west of US 41, then it's more like beachy type areas as you get closer to the water. We're gonna hop on in here. And there are a great selection of restaurants. I'm not saying they're, they're, they're uh, like here's a Costa Rican restaurant, Calabrias. So we're gonna come back here real quick. Uh, Bonita Brunch, I haven't tried that yet back here and there are a lot of restaurants i mean don't get me wrong it's a suburban area there's a lot of restaurants uh this lapas is actually probably one of the ones i would recommend as lapas it's a costa rican restaurant uh bistro um and we're not gonna go there though we're gonna go to calabria's italian now lapas is a great little restaurant in fact i'm not even sure if i want to go to lapas or if i want to go to uh this Italian restaurant, they're both pretty good. You can see they're fixing the sun for Lapa's up there. But you have Lapa's and you have Calabria. These are two good restaurants right here. Uh, kind of authentic Costa Rican food or what we're gonna eat right here is Calabria's. We're gonna get some euros, some chicken euros. <laughs> Trying to eat a little healthier. 